welcome everybody. I'm glad to have everyone today it's from all over the world, which is quite interesting. Today we're going to be presenting our first indices note, which is really interesting. My name is Jill, for those who don't know, and Chad and Andrew and myself will be taking you through the specifics of the note. Please feel free to ask questions as we go along, or you can post them in the chat. We're going to be monitoring that. And the session is going to focus on this particular note. For those that don't know how notes work like on an in-depth level, just let us know and we'll set up a separate session for you just to run through so that you do understand what's going on. If you would like to, again, please be sure to ask any, ask any questions that you might have and we can go from there. Just some of the housekeeping that we always have to take care of. Cashbox Global is a financial services organization and we are registered in with the FSC Mauritius that provides international investors with access to secured investment contracts that are offered by Europe's strongest banks. We design and provide access to these structured contracts and they are called structured notes. We don't provide any advice and this presentation covers product information for education only. We always encourage investors to conduct their own research and their own due diligence. And while Cashbox structured notes have a strong track record, past performance is no indication of future performance. So with the housekeeping out of the way, I'm going to hand over to Andrew. Joel, could I ask you to go back to the first slide? <laughs> the first slide, do you always do Yeah, that? the very first slide, because I think we should, I just want to put a few things in perspective here. Hi, good evening everybody from Cape Town. Uh, we're in the thick of winter. Uh, we have load shedding. I heard the load shedding discussion earlier. We've got load shedding starting at eight. I beg your pardon, at six, 1800. So um, we have inverters here and all the rest of it, so, and candles. So hopefully I'll be still on, on screen in half an hour. <laughs> but yeah, just to, to recap, and Chad is going to take us through a little bit of the metrics later. Um, but I think what many of you have seen in the past uh, sort of six to 12 months is a combination of growth notes and income notes. Um, that against, and also hybrid notes, and that against the background of um, certainly a lot of challenges that have come our way. And I'm talking post COVID, that seems ages ago. What's happened this year has really been also a little bit of a mine shaft and roller coaster. Um, I'm not gonna dwell too much on it. I just wanna set a little bit of a structure in terms of some of the headwinds that we've faced and why we have looked to the very first index note um, an index note being um, representative of certain world-class indices. Um, this is not unusual. It's some, something we certainly feel is the right fit for the right time. But I'd like to point you to those, um, those percentages. Ron actually mentioned, are they going to stay the same? Absolutely. They're contractually set in stone. We've got Graham McCallion on the call tonight from IDAD sitting on the gloriously sunny Isle of, uh, the Isle of Man. And, <laughs> and, a, he'll, and, he'll, and he'll attest to this, that those percentages as underwritten by Morgan Stanley um, are really stellar from the perspective in that a retail type of note, you'd probably be getting the semi-annual coupon as an annual coupon. So you could see GBP mm. as 6%, USD maybe at 8 euro, if you're lucky, when do see yeah. it maybe at 5. Yeah. So these have actually been doubled up. And to have a company with a gravitas as, as Morgan Stanley, and I'll just touch on them briefly, um, you know, they are the sixth largest money manager in the United States. Um, you know, some of their metrics are their total assets under management of $6.6 trillion. So, yeah, they're only six, but they're still a very, very large uh, player in this, in this field. Um, their market cap is $134 billion. Their credit ratings are absolutely stellar. And this is so important when we align ourselves and IDAT aligns itself to an issuer and underwriter of these contractual notes. They have to have a balance sheet that will stand up and pass all the, the very robust tests that their credit committee, that their investment committee, that as a bank, it makes sense for them to underwrite this. You know, S&P rank them as an A+, plus, Fitch as an A+, plus, and Moody's as an AA3. So an A-rated bank, tier one, absolutely uh, blue, um, you know, blue chip in terms of that. So I think that's important. So if we'd like to shoot ahead now, Jill, if you can take us to slide three, which is past your disclaimer, if you don't mind. Right. Into why indices. I mentioned... Um, index, uh, an index-based note has, has, has bubbled to the surface. Now, these are freely available. 
they, <coughs> excuse me, they generally are pretty much run of the mill in terms of being fairly steady. Um, you know, comprehensively, they on they don't match the coupons that are put out by uh, a reference market that maybe got four stocks underlying stocks in. So these are representative of an index which basically covers a number of top performing and blue chip companies within that particular index. Okay, so let's just talk about that in a little bit of context. The first six months of this year have been abysmal in terms of a lot of people have lost money in various, in various asset classes, in various investments. It's been a tough, tough six months. I think we can all attest to that. I'm not talking about wars. I'm not talking about interest rates, inflation tonight. Let's just, we're not going to look backwards. We're looking forwards. We're taking a positive step in terms of saying, Goldman, I mean, Morgan Stanley has underwritten an absolutely fantastic note with stellar returns, stellar coupon payoffs that you do not see in the retail space as an institutional type of return. Now, we certainly believe this is the right time for an indices-based note because if you look at a, a reference basket, which, we've, we, which we regularly produce, let's say with four stocks in, four tech stocks or four growth stocks or four recovery stocks, um, your concentration risk is li limited to those four stocks. Okay. And hence, you generally get a higher coupon return. That's why from index to get these type of returns is really great because we are spreading the risk not away from four stocks across the whole range of those companies that are constituents within a particular index. And there's three indexes tonight that indices will go through tonight. Um, so straight away, your concentration, your concentration point of risk is diversified. And we've all heard about diversification. It's absolutely key, especially in these times that we are weathering and you know making our navigating through. So very important to realize that generally speaking, when you lower the risk, a couple of things happen. Okay. A, your coupon return gets diminished or reduced. And in this instance, we believe it's well in the double digits and it's very buoyant. Also, they often take away your protection levels and we still got deep protection at 65 percent chad will take you through those metrics but it's still deep protection so we are looking into these times going forward of creating a a solid ship of store of, of, of wealth which will weather these storms that are coming through interest rates inflation wars supply shortages you name it okay and we've got time because this is structured over a five-year period so in other words, we've got time for this to auto call, for the coupons to all accumulate, to roll up and chat will take you through the snowball effect, as I call it, as it accumulates these semi-annual coupons on every six monthly basis. And as soon as it auto calls, all those coupons are paid back to you in a lump sum plus your initial capital, nominal, your nominal capital invested. So a great product and a great opportunity to look at one's portfolio and say, I've got my income notes, I've got my growth notes, um, some are spicy, but this certainly is almost like a bellwether type of opportunity. So if I could take you into the indices themselves, because these are quite important. We've got a lovely chart that follows the three, um, uh, the three indices that I'm going to take you to. And we'll, we'll look back on that a little bit more as well. So the first one we've chosen is the Eurostox 50. Um, this might sound a little Greek at the, at, the, at the top in terms of what the stocks mean and what does 50 mean. So we'll take it through. This is a European-based uh, index. It's representative across probably um, 11 countries. Um, I'll give you some sort of reference to that. You're looking at Germany, France, Spain, Italy, Belgium, Holland, etc. So pretty much the components of Euroland. Um, you're looking at companies. It's, it's 50 stands for the top 50 companies that are constantly recapitalized and rebalanced within that portfolio. So it's a moving, it's a moving feast in terms of some companies might fall out. Some might come in, but they're pretty much household names. You know, to give you an example, you're talking likes of BMW, BNP Paribas, you're talking about Louis Vuitton, you're talking about L'Oreal, uh, you're talking about Bayer, BMW, Mercedes, pretty much household names um, and companies that have been around for a long time. Great capitalizations, great leadership teams, and pretty much representative, I believe, of something that's really important that's coming out of the States. And the States kicks this off, uh, in fact, starts tomorrow, Wednesday. And that's what's called earnings season. Quality companies find their way into these indices by reason of their earnings. 
not by reason of their legacy or how old they are or what they've done in the past. This is this is now up to date empirical data that gets fed in, and they either fall out of the index or they stay in the index. So these are the performance that have weathered these storms literally pre uh, 2020 right the way through to where we're currently at. And earnings are very important because if your company is well capitalized, uh, can service debt if it has debt, and is in a position to create earnings both in profits and revenues, it's a great company to be in this index and we want to be part of that index. And the index is equally weighted. This goes for all the three indexes in terms of the different sectors. So you might find banking, manufacturing, chemicals, pharmaceuticals, et cetera, all within the space. So again, it comes back to diversification. This covers all the indices. You have different sectors performing in different stages of, of either the recovery or, or growth phases. So as opposed to being tied to one particular stock that goes up and down on its earnings, but more volatile, a uh, little bit more leverage in terms of payoffs. But this is, I certainly believe, uh, a lot more smoothed out in terms of a steadier, a steadier way forward. And you'll see it in some of the graphs. So this is the Euro stocks. Um, you'll see it in the chart later, how it's performed. This is probably the spices, I call it, the NASDAQ 100. It's pretty much representative of the tech space within the, the US market. Um, it performs a little bit differently to both the Euro stocks 50, which we've just seen, and the next index which we'll show you, which is the Nikkei 225, the Japanese market. So there I've given you the three. You've got geographical diversity in terms of Euroland, um, the US tech space, which is not the wider America, the S&P 500, it's more confined to uh, technology and digital. And then you've got the Japanese market, the broader Japanese market, the 225. So the NASDAQ as well, we've pretty much, if we just look back, sorry, Joel, just back to the NASDAQ, I'll just touch on a little bit of that. It's, it's had an absolutely stellar ride during 2020, right the way through the pandemic. Um, it's, it was the rubber band recovery of, as I always, re, as I always refer to it in webinars, it, it did fantastically well and certain companies did fantastically well. But as much as they can do fantastically well in terms of ascent, so their descent can be equally um, you know, exponential. So coming back to that risk factor, taking out the risk, building in more, uh, taking out volatility, building in more resolution in terms of resonance, in terms of defensive properties across a broader base, but still with those great payoffs. Um, the NASDAQ also, I mean, household names in there, Google, Facebook, Meta, um, AMD, um, Advanced Micro Devices, NVIDIA, um, very much the space of, of where the world was. But let me give a caveat to that. The world is still needing semiconductors and microprocessors and electric cars and all those wonderful great things. So it's not, it's not falling out of bed. You'll see some, some degradation, and that's why we believe it's a great time to be accessing this NASDAQ as an index. In other words, we are taking the top 100 not just one of those names that I mentioned. So moving on to the Nikkei, which is quite interesting as well, and then we'll go to the chart. The Nikkei 225 is 225, the top um, capitalized companies on, the, on, on this exchange in Tokyo. <clears throat> Again, household names, you know, I could prop them out. Um, Honda, uh, Mitsubishi, Toyota, that's all automotive. We can go to Sumitomo Heavy, heavy Engineering, Canon, um, Kickerman Source, uh, Kickerman Group, which makes the famous soy sauce, soy sauce, uh, soy sauce there in there. Um, Sony, so a lot of electronics in there, a lot of manufacturing, a lot of uh, vehicles as well. But again, great companies with earnings, and I believe we're not in an earnings recession. People are talking about this word recession. It's coming out all over the place. And we are certainly in a bear market. As I said, we've had the worst start uh, to, the year in, uh, to this year in probably 50 years since the late uh, 70s. But certainly earnings are not showing that particular sort of bent. For example, in the United States, yesterday, I beg your pardon, last week, they put a lot of store in how many jobs are created on a monthly basis. Okay, And last week, they blew the numbers uh, way beyond estimates. Now, that sort of flies in the face of we're in a recession. I think the jury's out. Interest rates are going up. Inflation, I'm getting back to that old bogeyman. But I believe great companies that are representative of these indices 
will continue to hold their head above the water and will create super growth in terms of going forward. So let's have a look at this chart that I've been alluding to, if you don't mind, Joel. Okay, so this goes back some years, okay? Um, and you can see the charts identified by their colors. And you can see the two bottom ones, uh, Eurostox 50 and the Nikkei have pretty much kept an even kill over that period of time. Uh, we were having a chat to Graham and Graham, please jump in, you know, in terms of, um, I mentioned there's a 65% protection level, capital protection um, on, this, on this particular note. Now that means from a peak to trough, you're talking a 35% degradation. It's hard to find, perhaps on a more concentrated period, short, because this is stretched out over time. Um, it's hard to find these. So these are two fairly um, agnostic um, markets in terms of their volatility. As opposed to contradistinction, the spice in the, in the ointment, if I can call it that, not the fly, the spice, <laughs> is the red line, which is indicative of, the, of the, um, the NASDAQ. Now, that's obviously the tech space. You can see it's been absolutely exponential. If you'd bought that at an index you know, 10 years ago and you'd sold it um, sort of towards the end of last year, you would have been the next Warren Buffett but they're few and far between. We believe there's value though, in terms of those companies that are in there. There's been a good, there's been a necessary re-rating um, in terms of fundamentals, in terms of earnings. Um, I've been in investment markets now for close to 30 years. And during the pandemic, pretty much every fundamental um, rule was torn up and thrown out the window in terms of price earnings ratios, um, net, out of, net out of values, any quantitative or qualitative tool was pretty much thrown out the window and people went with sentiment and we didn't know where we were going. Mm. I think what's happened now is that we have come back to more normalcy in terms of some of those companies were way beyond their earnings range. In other words, their earnings would not underpin what they were actually worth. In other words, they were over, overrated and overvalued. It was a necessary re-rating to come back from those giddy highs. But again, if I can come back to this important feature, um, I don't believe we're in an earnings recession. And I believe quality companies as represented in these companies will come through with earnings. I'm not, I'm not saying by any stroke of the imagination, the next six months are going to be easy. I would rather put it in a, on, on a level where we are slowly coming out of these dark times. I won't say we're crawling out of them, we're crawling out of the quagmire. But there are going to be checks, there's going to be balances, and there are going to be a lot of stresses and strains still. But I certainly believe some of the pain has been priced in. And I, I feel certainly that once, as again, that bogeyman inflation, once it's tamped down, we're going to see quality companies with superior earnings as represented in these indices coming to the fore. Yeah. So great yeah, opportunity think, and great timing. Yeah. Right? I think, I, and, and Andrew, sorry, yeah, sorry to interject there because I, I've, I've probably disrupted your flow, but. Just to your your point about the the peaks and troughs. I mean that that uh, that time period there from uh, twenty ten through to uh, 22, um, 2022, Sorry, is um, is really okay. We've got one major shock in there, haven't we? We've got COVID. Now you look at uh, you look at the euro stocks and you look at the Nikkei. Um, you can see there that there's that that dip. Um, but obviously, that's quite a that's quite an elongated time frame, so it doesn't look that dramatic. Mm. But let's let's look at that in its entirety and think to ourselves: Okay, we had the credit crunch in 19, uh, in 1999, uh, in, uh, and we had the long term capital management. And I think peak to trough was around about the sort of 27 percent mark. We then had the tech bubble in 2000. Um, and again, that was very tech orientated. It didn't, it didn't hit the whole of the market, but there was contagion. And again, we were really only looking around about the 25 to 30% mark. We then get the credit crunch, which isn't shown on that graph, but again, peak to trough recovery period within less than one year um, mm. be because of the massive intervention across, uh, across, across central banks across the world. Uh, we had COVID, again, massive intervention, but but again, it's really just to support your idea and the theme generally, as well as the earnings uh, from these uh, from the companies within these huge um, bourses across the world. That the, there is incredibly there is an incredibly strong resistance to shock, 
Um, and when there is shock, it's very, very short lived. Um, and yes, we can see some elongated pain with uh, the, what we have ahead with us um, as far as inflation, um, et cetera. But, but I think fundamentally where the shocks occur with, with what we've done um, with Cashbox to build in that capital preservation barrier of 65% on these powerful, powerful indexes, indices, um, it, it gives comfort to the investor. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, I was speaking to a fund manager earlier this afternoon um, and he said to me, so do you think earnings is the, the only issue here? And I said, absolutely not. Earnings is, for me, it's paramount because it shows you the health of the business within a bourse as, as Graham's represented. But it's not simply size or earnings uh, or market capitalization. I think it, there's a whole bunch of factors that go in. And I certainly believe you would see in those preceding slides. Uh, these, these, these indices are constantly rebalanced. As I mentioned, some, fall, some companies might fall out and newcomers come in, which is great. It gives it some dynamism within the actual, um, in, in the boss itself. But it's price of the stock, it's the liquidity of the stock, the sector balance. These are very balanced um, um, equations. You know, banks work on algorithms. I use the word equation and algorithm is it's basically, contra it's, it's not contradistinction, but it's, 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 it's colleague, it's, it's coefficient, should I say. Mm. Not it's colleague, it's coefficient. So performance, prices, liquidity, sectors, you know, if you have to break down those, um, those particular <clears throat> bosses, you won't see, for example, it's all weighted in manufacturing or chemicals or energy. There's a spread across that, that diversification brings down that risk so let's have a back test now this is um that i believe is quite quite useful to look at in a little bit back that shows you when these products are put together by certainly the and the investment bank thinking goes into this from all sides for us as investors and it's a win-win on the other side which is the bank this shows you over a, over a period of 12 years what the incidence or incident percentage rate would be of a product auto calling early. Now, Chad's going to take you through this auto call because this product must auto call for you to collect. If I can call it, I can be as blunt as that. In other words, every six months it has this coupon, and at a point in time when it's above a certain level, which he'll explain, you collect your capital and then all the, all the coupons and the investment ends. So you can see. Uh, there's a declining to the right-hand side of this, of this backtesting graph. The earlier days are the happy days, if I can call it, in terms of if you, want to, if you wanted an early exit from both the bank's perspective and your perspective. So there's a higher incidence of a product like this um, calling early um, as opposed to over the longer period of time. And you know, if you look at the metrics on the right-hand side, I think that's fairly impressive. Um, you know, out of the 1,752 products, most of them auto, well, 70, 97% of them have auto called. In other words, they end before their contract period, before the T's and C's run to full duration. I won't say they're designed to do that, but there's a heavy bias towards it happening. Um, not auto called means they run to, they actually run to maturity. So it's, it's not a product that you put in your drawer and you forget about it for five years. Something is going to very most definitely happen before that time. Uh, I think that uh, the next point, the percentage that return for capital, key. This is a product and this is an asset class that we design certainly for bearish times, even for good times. But this is not a shoot the lights out product where you get 180% return in five days. That's not, this is not the game. This is for clients who are looking to protect and grow a legacy, to grow their capital base. Uh, zero breach, I think that's important. Uh, these are audited figures. The historic returns, now match those returns, historic returns, against what this product is putting out. Very similar, very, you know, very close to what the coupon payments are on this particular product created with all these headwinds and all this bad news and all the stress going forward. So very much in line. This is not an out there product. It's very much in line with what historically has been produced through this particular asset class. So fundamentally, empirically, um, you know, I can hand on heart say I'm very comfortable looking at the type of coupon payoffs that Morgan Stanley is prepared to underwrite 
against what our historic averages have been. If it was something way out of sync, I'd, I'd start asking questions. This is not way out of sync. This is exactly what we're looking for. So I think with that, Chad, we're onto the next chart, which is really the actual nitty gritties, if I'm not mistaken, of the actual product, some sort of key key metrics. Yeah. So yeah. Um, if I may hand over to you, sir. Good stuff. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. Um, lovely to see everybody online. Um, and coming to you from Joburg, what a lovely evening. Andrew and Graham, I'm truly impressed with this product. Well done. Um, it's nice to see an issuing bank of, of the nature of Morgan Stanley um, as the guarantor and underwriter of the product. As everybody can see, Morgan Stanley is a Fitch and Moody's A-rated bank, one of the top uh, in Europe, of course, and that's always the case. We, we would only issue out of the top banks uh, for our safety and our security, of course. The coupon here is a growth-based coupon. And what does this mean? Um, our income-based products typically would pay an income out every quarter. In this case, as each, uh, as each half year comes past, semi-annually, 6% in pounds is going to crew until the product auto calls early or auto calls early maturity. I'm going to explain how that works in a minute. So as these quarters go by, so this coupon builds up. When the product reaches a certain point, um, the bank's going to pay us out all of our coupon and our capital back to our trading platform. The maximum term in this case is a five-year product, but the next line below chats around an auto call, and the auto call is the opportunity for the bank to make the money and close the product early. So it's possible that the first observation for an auto call or early maturity is 12 months. So it's this product, if you like, has a minimum period of 12 months, but it could run to a maximum of uh, five years. Highly unlikely, as you've seen in um, the figures before, that the product is going to go to, to five years. In the basket, we've got these tremendous uh, index stocks that Andrew's taken us through. The capital protection, I'd like to show you on a graph just now. This would cover the 35% that Andrew and Graham were chatting about. So our capital is fully protected up until um, the last point, which I'm going to take you through on the graph. It's easier to explain. On the availability, the product is going to go live uh, later next week. We're going to be collecting up until the 18th of July. This is when your funds would have to be on your trading platform and then issued into the product. Now, one of two things can happen. We could reach full subscription because the bank gives us a certain quantum in euro, pound, and uh, dollar. We could either reach the capacity of the currency or we could hit the um, start date being the 18th of July. The minimum investment is 10,000 of either of the currencies, euro, and I'm delighted that there's euro in here. We don't often get those. GBP and USD. So again, in terms of diversification, for those that have a portfolio of structured notes, this is a great opportunity to perhaps diversify across currency if, uh, if you would like. Thanks, Jill. Um, here are the key metrics and the slide we always love. So the first observation is going to be in July of 23. That would be one year away where the product could potentially early mature. If that was the case, the payment would happen from Morgan Stanley to your trading platform one week later, roughly the 27th of July. And the beauty with a structured note is everything is um, clearly defined. These are all the terms and conditions built in. The products would not vary from this. This is issued off Morgan Stanley's uh, balance sheet directly to you, the investor. You hold the contract. And if this was the case, we're going to chat around the auto call trigger at 100%. This is on the right-hand side. And again, I'm going to go to my graph in a second to explain how this is going to work. Um, and so it carries on. So we'd keep running through these observations. Once all these shares are at or above their start price being 100%, the product would early mature um, and close out early. Thanks, Jill. All righty. So Jill, if I could use your indicator, if you don't mind, 
Um, folks, for those that are new to Structured Notes, we had always run a training program or training course. We'd love you to reach out and let us know if you'd like in-depth um, product training on how products work. I'm just going to do a quick overview. So what will happen, the, the share price for those three indexes are going to be measured at the start of the product. That's their start price at 100 or 100% 100 of their start price. We're going to measure those through the life of the product. And as each six months goes past and as each observation happens, we're going to build up this coupon, build up this coupon, build up this coupon. But what will happen from month 12 already, the bank says to us, if the stocks are at or above 100% of their start price, they just need to be above, the product's going to mature early. They're going to add up the amount of coupons that have passed. So let's use pounds because it's a round number. 6% plus 6%, minimum of 12% in pounds is going to pay out to our trading platform. And that auto call could happen at any uh, subsequent half yearly observation right until uh, maximum term. We don't expect this thing to run anywhere near maximum term because all we are saying, the shares just need to rise above their start price between now and five years and our product pays out. Thanks, Joel. Now we're gonna chat about the capital protection. So if you see, there's a, a dotted line at the 65% mark. And what's amazing with a structured note is a deep level of capital protections built in. So let's say there's one share in this uh, particular basket and it misbehaves. Let's say over five years, highly, highly unlikely, let's say it closes out at 80% of its start price. It's lost 20% of value in our example. As long as the worst performing share in that basket is not deeper or has not lost more than 35%, your full capital comes out, which is incredible because if you bought into any index, you would be in the market for whatever it was worth. So a lot of protections built in because the bank is wanting to track this money. Now, over the last five years, if we have a look back at all the growth-based structured notes, they've all matured early, never ever testing that capital protection barrier. That's the design and the outcome we want for the product. Thanks, Joel. And then um, perhaps just to give you an idea, folks, um, these are all early maturities that have happened since October 21. We wanted to get a, a full six month run um, up until observations. Our average product period has run between nine and 12 months, depending on when that auto call barrier is set. Um, and again, uh, hats off to Andrew and Graham, our income-based products have been producing on average an annualized return of 14% per annum. Um, this would have been paid out in quarterly coupons typically. And then of our growth-based products, because the bank only pays out a lump sum, typically a lot larger, our average has been at 19%. So well done, Andrew and Graham. I think the products you design are, are fantastic. I think the next slide's you, Jill. Indeed it is. So for that, Chad, I think it's a really exciting product. Um, just for those that are not familiar with the, the way the structured note works, you do need to have an investment platform. We can run through that and help you with that if you need, need it. Again, we work in a highly regulated environment. And just to confirm, the funds flow goes from the investor through to the investment platform and into the investment bank, and then back the exact same way. So nobody gets between you and your investment. We provide you with the ISA number, and then that is the number that you will use to instruct your platform to place the investment on your behalf. Then just in summary, with, when it comes to any structured notes, you always need to remember that the bank must be comfortable that the exercised options, if it was a stock note, um, must cover the cost of borrowed money and they're going to need to make a healthy profit. The investor always needs to be comfortable with the strength of the bank and that in this case, that the underlying indices won't drop by more than 35% over a five-year term. And those are, the two, those are the two kind of sides of the coin of what needs to be considered from both the bank's perspective and the investor's perspective. And over the last five years, over 245 growth or to call notes, 
And RT1 are still active, and 154 have, have autocalled as expected. And the average duration has been around 3.3 years. So even though it has a five-year term, the probability of it coming out earlier is absolutely that. And with that, I'd like to open to questions. Does anybody have any questions? Actually, Jill, I was just going to add quickly, um, you know, your point there on the, the, what the investor must be comfortable with, the, the, the strength of the bank. Um, Andrew mentioned the capitalization value of Morgan Stanley uh, being over $100 billion, um, which is obviously a, a considerable size of, of business. And I think you mentioned, Andrew, uh, roughly about $3 trillion under management um, on behalf of uh, clients and investors um, and institutions. Um, but I think it's also interesting to note that, um, you know, because particularly relevant with regards to the, the credit crunch uh, that, we, that we all have, have been aware of in the past, um, that the capital tier one ratio of Morgan Stanley is almost double um, that of, and I'll, I'll, I'll cite you an example, it's almost double that of Investec, which is listed on the FTSE. So not Investec to, the, to your local market, but Investec, the, the larger organization, which is the intent, international business. So Morgan Stanley has a capital tier one ratio, um, which is essentially their core capital, um, which, they, which is effectively gauged against their risk-weighted risk -weighted assets. Um, and, and, and as I mentioned, it's around about the 20% mark and Investec is about 12%. So again, just to give you a feeling for the, the size and calibration of the business that we're dealing with here. Um, and I think, it, again, it's credit to, to Cashbox that they brought another uh, gargantuan business to the table um, for the benefit of, uh, of, of you, their, their, um, their customers and clients. And uh, and I think it's very important to stress the, the ability of these organizations to have the, 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 the prudence and the size to be able to qualify for such a high credit rating. Um, so again, very, very important to, um, to, to, to individuals to consider. Wow. You know, it also strikes me, Graham, when you have a look at the returns compared to owning those indexes individually over five years you know, to get mm. these kind of returns, uh, yeah, well done. No, yeah. fantastic. I mean, it's like, again, it's, uh, you know, I should imagine if, if there are any individuals on this webinar that have, have been on webinars before uh, with Cashbox, um, you know, again, it's, uh, we're, we're very familiar with the, with the European business of BBVA because that's been very, very prolific in pricing in the marketplace with, with what Cashbox has wanted to do. But, you know, again, working with, with you guys, uh, you know, working with Andrew, we've identified that Morgan Stanley has stood out to be able to price very, very competitively at these levels, as you've mentioned, Chad, you know, to be delivering a euro rate of double digit uh, with these three uh, indices is, uh, is quite considerable. And um, again, I'm, I'm delighted to work with you to be able to provide three strong currencies you know th probably the three most pertinent currencies on the on the uh, within the global stage at, uh, at present um you know to be able to get double digit across the board um is uh, you know we're just delighted to be able to to satisfy mm -hmm. that request and i suppose graham also the the statement that morgan stanley are making about those indexes and what they they view them to be let's mm -hmm. say in the next year or so because mm. uh, this is coming straight off their trading desk, right? So yeah, high definitely. level of confidence from them, of course. Yeah, a lot of confidence, and I think, uh, but but also considering the the you know the level of protection, because you know again, as has been mentioned before, uh, when using stock basket uh, stock baskets for the for the structured notes, fifty percent has been the regularly uh, identified capital protection barrier, and again, incredibly deep. Uh, but uh, necessary, we believe, uh, in working with you guys to, to to be able to deliver the right note for the for the for the client and the end in, end investor. But I think to have a sixty five percent capital protection barrier with these in with these indices um, is again incredibly deep and incredibly powerful to 
ensure that there is capital preservation um, as a stalwart of, of this uh, structured note. Um, so mm-hmm. yeah, we, we've you know we we've, we've built something together which will stand the test of incredibly choppy waters, which we know may potentially be out there in the future, in the very near future. Nice, Graham. I want to point you back to Andrew. Sorry, uh, Joe. Look, there's webinar by candlelight. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I've got my, I've got my little. Cam- <laughs> I'm going to put it over my head like a, like a halo. <laughs> we have a question You're from a Ronald. Driver, you need a halo these days. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we've, we've been plunged into darkness, but uh, still connect. Okay. Um, we've got a question. Um, thanks, guys. Um, yeah, thanks, everybody. It looks uh, obviously very impressive. The, um, if I could dumb it down, if you don't mind, just at two o'clock in the morning when I'm staring at the ceiling, wondering what I've done with my kids' inheritance. Um, the, <laughs> the, the other note that I'm, that I'm involved in, uh, Navida, PayPal, Jill, help me out, I can't remember the, the, the real name of it. We haven't had the first um, auto call due to the, the, the underlying shares having dropped um, to a degree. Got uh, great correspondence from Cashbox to explain that that doesn't disappear, which is quite good, so that I don't chew my teeth off, um, <laughs> but that it actually rolls over. Fantastic. Great. So I understand that things, we, as we know, are cyclical and we've, you know, like I said, the world's going to go back to some sort of name and we will, those shares will probably go wherever they do go. Why I'm interested in this one, because it's completely different. Yes, there are some of the, the, the stocks on the, um, the, the US exchange, but having said that, there's also another 75 that aren't tech stocks um, or whatever within that. What, um, let's use the, um, I'm not gonna go uh, pounds, but use, use pounds for, let's say I put 10,000 pounds in at 12% annualized. Is that, is that number right, um, so to speak? Say yeah. it does call yeah. early. So let's just use it over an example. So we get, let's say three years, we get um, 12% on the 10 grand. So we get that year one, year two, year three. Mm-hmm. Correct. Yeah. The 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 twelve percent gets paid back into the underlying platform. In my case, uh, Ramsey, mm-hmm. um, into the uh, trading platform. That money yeah. sits yep. there. If yep. it calls early, in other words, we lose two years of the twelve percent. Do we lose that those two twelve years if the bank calls it early? So, Ronald, what will happen? The bank. At the stage when the shares have risen, this is where the bank's going to make their money, and this is where they're going to have paid back uh, the cost of borrowed money, right, back to us. So as every six months go past, six more percent pounds will be added to the to your pot, and so we carry on. So until the day it closes, and it will only close on an observation date, it will close, it'll then add up that last coupon and that sum would come together. So it could be that you go one year, 12%, you could go 18 months, um, that's 18. And so we carry on. So you you won't, you, you'll get paid out the sum total of the amount of coupons that have added up, which is really the time period that's passed. Yeah. So um, Ronald, sorry, Chad, I just want to um, confirm, Ronald, this is a growth note, not an income yeah. note. So it's not that in that first 12 months there'll be there'll be funds that'll come from the note into onto your platform. That'll only happen on an auto call. And then it'll be the full number of of half of six months that have that have accumulated that'll be paid out in one lump sum. Okay, cool. Thank you. That is important. Um yeah, the, other about- note, the other note that you're in is an income note. Great, fantastic. I've got about 10 friends who want to understand all of this. So the recording hopefully will also help them because I'm sick of trying to explain it to them. But you might yeah. just get, I might just give them your number your so number, John. Yeah. What we would love to do is set up we we do training courses on how structured notes work. We'd love to invite you into that and your mates. Um if Jill, I think we can contact you directly, Ronald. And if there's anybody else who um, would like that. Chad, I actually yeah. sat through one of those, but Unfortunately, the traumatic loss to Wales on Saturday has wiped yeah. everything prior to that completely out of my mind. Sometimes it does take what it does take going through it one or two times just to kind of get the concepts better down. But yeah. once 
that you've got it. So we definitely need Absolutely. To... Especially those of us who went to government schools, not St. John's and oh, you know, St. Andrews. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, but we took bumps on the head in rugby games. Yeah. I think I think also as well, Ron, if I can just quickly uh, chip in there, just to, to add to your example, um, if after three years, the note auto calls, then in your analogy, you would receive £13,600. So you would receive your £10,000 capital and 36% growth over the three year period in pounds. So you would receive £13,600. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate it. No worries. Ron, can, can I just throw my five, five cent piece here? Do you know how snowball works when it goes down a hill? <laughs> I went to school in Queenstown, so yes, I do know what snow looks like. <laughs> yeah, so as a snowball goes, and it's called the snowballing effect, actually. These, these highfalutin financier banker guys, they call it a snowballing effect. And, you know, we've all seen it in movies. As a snowball goes down a hill, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So like this, the coupons just get bigger and bigger and bigger, accumulate in one big ball. And when it hits the order call, call that the wall, it gets paid out. So yeah. as opposed to a as income note, which pays away every quarter or every six months, uh, this gets paid back as a lump sum at that particular point in time. So I often say to people, it's like a snowball, it just gets bigger. Yeah. yeah. Mugi, cool. nice to see you. Mugi, it's nice to see you online. Let's connect and we'll do the training, yeah? Yes, please. I would love to because I, would, I, I just didn't get understand. Well, I slowly understand a little bit, but I didn't understand between income notes and the other notes. Growth, Growth notes. Growth, yeah. Growth yeah. notes, right. We'll just carry so, so I would like to kind of get into um, training to understand a bit more. And so, yeah. We'd love to. Great. Thanks, Mugi. Excellent. Great. Are there any other questions for tonight? We're all good. So I want to just let everyone know about something that's quite exciting that's coming up. Um, we're going to be hosting a session with Tom McGrath, who manages several funds out of the, out of the UK, and he's going to be sharing his view of what you know has happened in the first half of the year and what we can expect for the second half. And we're looking at hosting that on the 26th of um, August. No, July. Yeah, it is July. July. 26th of July. So look out for the invites. Um, Tom does work with um, Graham yeah. as well. And so, Graham, do you want to just give us a two minute? Yeah, um, definitely. CV on Tom. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Tom's, uh, Tom, Tom's been with the business uh, several years. He's a good friend of uh, Clive Moore. Um, who is the founder of IDAT. And, uh, you know, Tom's, Tom has been in working within investment management for, uh, I think, around about 25 years. Um, you know, he was involved in Miton way back in the day in the UK. Um, he, was, he was cutting edge on the, on, you know, typically at the at about four or five screens um, on his desk uh, watching the markets. Um, he's, he knows his stuff. Um, he's a very... He's one of those individuals that I'm delighted to work with because when it gets really scary, Tom's the guy to be sat with because he just keeps calm. Um, he knows his stuff. He knows all about, um, he's had several experiences of, of awful times in the markets over the, over the duration of his career. And, um, you know, he's a pleasure to work with. He's a soothing individual. Um, he's very knowledgeable. And um, and he's experienced an awful lot, and um, his knowledge of uh, of the of the markets is is uh, is absolutely wonderful. Um, he he is uh, very familiar with structured notes. Um, as Jill mentioned, he he runs um, a, a few of uh, the the funds that IDAD operate uh, within the business, which is a you know a, a, another segment of of, uh, of what IDAD does. Um, and, um, you know, he's, uh, he's, he's very eloquent and, and he's not an individual who likes to use acronyms and all of the phrases that we use within the investment arena. He, uh, he talks sensible, a sensible language, which we can all understand. And, uh, and I think it's very enlightening when you sit and listen to him and, um, and I'll be delighted to, you know, sit with him and Cashbox and, and everybody else that comes on the call to, to you know, to 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 look at what uh, we that Tom feels is for the future, 
and um, and and also a little bit about uh, what's occurred in this first half of the year. Because an as Andrew mentioned, um, it's been um, you know it has been incredibly challenging, very difficult, quite scary. And um, you know we've, uh, we've we've we need a steady hand at the helm to uh, to move forward. So we look forward to that. Great. Thanks. Great. Well, with that, if there are no more questions, last chance. Otherwise, you can pop us an email. Um, thanks so much for joining us this evening and have a fantastic day. And if any of you are interested in going into the note, we're going to be sending the recording out as soon as it's available. And then if you are interested in getting to the note, the, the, the open period is quite short and quite tight. So let us and then we will send through the um, ASA number and if you any other details that you need together with the term sheet and get you into the product. Excellent. Well, with that, thanks. Have a great evening. Cheers, Joel. Thank you. Thanks, thanks very much. much. Thanks. Cheers, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.